First of all, I'd like to acknowledge and to thank deeply Searle for all the work he's done. He's been a great contributor, a founder, and uh, truly an inspiration to all of us in the work that he has done for the last 25 years. Passing the baton over to Tom, uh, we realized that, uh, I guess I did, and I spoke to my colleagues uh, of what we're going to need to do for the next 25 years. And that means that's going to be LeBreton Flats. We're hoping that um, that is successful. And uh, if we are successful, we actually will not have the option of sitting around dotting all the T's and I's, crossing T's and I's, but we will have to start hiring dramatically for that project well in advance of us actually concluding any type of uh, agreement. So we have to get that rolling. That is a four to five billion dollar project. We had Searle, for example, built this arena, but you're talking about a mini city that you're responsible for. There's the, I can't imagine being a, I, I wouldn't want to job, I wouldn't want his job. Uh, it's big and it's so multifaceted. And by the way, parallel to the Le Breton Flats development, you got to run a hockey team as well. An organization over here with thousands of employees. So it's not, a, it's not something that's for, um, uh, you need somebody with experience in that environment. Until things change, we're doing the best we can, and, and you know we've got a terrific hockey club and uh, an outdoor game and a game in Sweden and things to start setting us up for next year, and that becomes kind of the short-term opportunity, and the arena is more of a long-term opportunity. Uh, build the best arena in the world, and I don't necessarily mean the biggest and the most expensive and glitziest, but the best hockey experience for our fans and for our players, uh, and then ultimately win the Stanley Cup and grow the business. And, you know, if you do that in the next five years, that's been a good run.